Hello everyone, welcome to this global GEG broadcast. We'll be making a start shortly, and while we're waiting for everyone to arrive, why not head into the chat, let us know who you are, where you're from, your Twitter handle, and if you've got any questions that you'd like us to answer during the course of this evening, let us know there as well. Also, if you haven't already done so, make sure you hit that subscribe button to make sure you stay up to date with all of the events being organised by us at Global GEG. We'll be making a start really soon. Thanks for joining us. Hi there, everybody. Welcome to another Gav session. Uh, my name is Gavin Foster. I am coming to you live from Ontario, Canada. I am about two hours uh, east of Toronto. And today's session is going to be the Artist's Tech Palette. So I want to say a great big thank you to Global GEG for bringing me here today. Um, so the artist's tech palette is going to be a very different kind of webinar than most of us are used to. So uh, I'm not actually going to show you how to use any one program. I'm going to introduce to you uh, about 30 programs. Uh, all I'm really going to do is give you their names and a little tiny bit about what they are. Uh, I might have an anecdote or two about how I have used them personally. Um, but then it's going to be up to you to sort of go and play. So I'm going to see uh, if I can get us some time, maybe 40 minutes of me talking, and then some time for everybody to play. Now, if uh, you would like to pop into the chat window, your, oh, there's my fingers, your name uh, and where you are from and maybe what kind of subjects you teach. That's really going to help uh, guide me in terms of how I talk to you. Um, I myself uh, am a elementary school teacher and I teach music, drama, and dance. And so the artist's tech palette uh, is going to be a list of tech tools that you can use if you are teaching music, dance, drama, or visual art. Uh, and I've got it broken into the four sections so you can kind of see uh, how it can be used. Now, the other thing I wanted to mention is right across the bottom of my uh, slide deck there, you'll see my address, gavinzo, G-A-V-I-N-Z-O, dot com slash session nine. So that, um, that link will get you into the slide deck that I am using right now. And on every single page of the slide deck, there are clickable links where you can go and try out all of these different applications. Um, so if you're wondering how do I get to that application, you're going to need to go to my slide deck, uh, which is gavinzo.com slash session nine. And it is on the bottom of every page of the slide deck in case you, uh, you get lost with it. So uh, as I said, for those of you that don't know who I am, my name is Gavin Foster. I am an elementary school music teacher from Belleville, Ontario, Canada. Um, as well as being a music teacher, I am also one of the global GEG leaders. I am a certified educator level one and two. I am a certified trainer for Google. I am a Soundtrap expert, and we'll hear more about Soundtrap later on today. I am a Flipgrid ambassador, which I will also talk about today. Uh, and I am also a hopeful for uh, the Virtual Innovator Academy for Google 2020. I have uh, recently submitted my application. And as you might have guessed, um, it is all arts based. And it's talking about the future of arts education uh, across our globe with uh, the pandemic having made the changes that it did. So that's a little bit of who I am. Again, if you have any questions, please pop them into the chat. Uh, and I'll try my best to answer as I go. So let's start talking about dance. Let's start with some applications that you can use uh, if you are teaching dance. So I'm going to start with a program called Pixlr Express. Now you might think this is a weird uh, application for dance, but I've actually used it because Pixlr Express allows you to very, very quickly um, make photo collages. And so if I can kind of share a little assignment with you really quickly, um, what I did a few years ago, maybe three years ago, I did this. I managed to find online this amazing uh, lexicon of frozen images. So I'll just pop up my, uh, my Google Drive here. And of course, if you go to my slide deck, gavinso.com slash session nine, you can have all of these as well. Uh, and if you look really carefully here in the image, all of these pictures are just images of people in motion. 
So some are standing, some are moving, some are bending, some are leaning, some are arms out, some are legs out. Um, and each image is kind of the same size. So if I click on one here, you're going to see that sort of uh, image on the page. And what my students and I did is using Pixlr Express, we were able to build um, three by three photo collages. So there were nine images on the page and those images, we called them dance cards. And I told the students, you have to sort of make up a 30 second dance or a 40 second dance. And you have to um, figure out an image that's going to represent the move that you're doing and put it on this dance card. And then I would pass the dance cards out to the class and I would say, okay, so group two, you are going to look at group one's dance. And I would pass them the dance card and I would say, you don't get to see it first. You have to look at this dance card that has like frozen stoic people in bizarre positions. And you have to then recreate what you think their dance might have been based on this dance card. And so when I sent that um, into the other groups to have a look at, it was really quite uh, interesting to see other students um interpretations of somebody else's dance um and then you also had you know the group from uh the group one was laughing and giggling watching group two's interpretation of their um uh dance card and then for the third part of the assignment i would then put group two and group one together and i would say okay group one now show them what the actual dance was and group one would show it and i'd say now are there any ideas that group two had based on your pictures that you like better than what you did and then they would collaborate and build and they just basically used these stoic frozen images of dancers to create um, full-blown 30 40 50 second dances um, and what I liked best about Pixlr Express is I was able literally to just pull up my drive with all of my images in it and go, uh, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, click. And it would make that um, printable collage really, really quickly. So that's how I use Pixlr Express for dance. Now, I don't know um, how many people here are still into the Just Dance video games. I know they're going back a few years now and they're maybe not as popular with students. I still use them all the time. Um, but there's a great app called Just Dance Now uh, and it allows you to access the entire Just Dance library uh, and it allows you to access it from your phone. Now, it's not free. Uh, I think there's three or four dances that are free and they change periodically. But if you do pay for a subscription to Just Dance Now, and I don't have the uh, cost in my brain, you actually get a, um, access to every single dance that's in the Just Dance video library. Uh, and you can just project it from your phone right to your classroom computer. Or if you have uh, a Chromecast or an Apple TV attached to it, you can screen mirror or stream right to your device. Um, and then your phone which is uh, in your hand becomes the controller that monitors how you're moving. So it's a real quick way for you to get a group of students up and dancing. Uh, and then it saves you uh, doing what I used to do, uh, which was I used to bring in my uh, Nintendo Wii and hook it up to my smart board and have the kids work it through that way. But with Just Dance Now, uh, you have access to every single dance that's there. Um, and unlike just going to YouTube and trying to search for those Just Dance videos, um, if you're using Just Dance now, it is actually scoring your students the way the video game does because it uses your phone to become the controller. So check out Just Dance now. Uh, anyway, what I was going to say before is, if you are in my slide deck, gavinzo.com slash session nine, and if you're interested in checking out Just Dance now, all you have to do is click on the image and it will pop up the information you need for that particular um, application. And it explains how to work it. So this is why I made sure you had access to that gavinzo.com slash session nine, because on every single page, all you have to do is click the logo and it will take you uh, to try out that application. All right, now Triller. Triller is something that I haven't used personally. Um, it kind of falls in the realm of like a TikTok kind of idea. So um, you get a free account 
and there is a predetermined list of music in Triller, and it allows you to create 15 second uh, video dance clips or music video clips. Um, and then they can be posted to all your favorite social media sites or they can be put on a classroom website. So I find this is a really good energizer activity um, for students uh, who maybe are reluctant to dance. If you can get them Triller, then what they might be able to do is just try something out for 15 seconds and see if they like it. Now, I don't know how many people still know Video Star. This is an app that I used probably almost 10 years ago when we first got uh, our first iPads at my school. Um, hey, Abid Patel is here. The A, the B, the I, and the D. Welcome, Abid. Thank you for being here today. Um, the Video Star... Um, is an iOS app only. So this only works on iPhones or iPads. Um, it is a music video creator. Um, but what I mean by that is you don't actually get to sing and create your own tunes, but you get to uh, use existing tunes and create music videos with dance and movement uh, and all kinds of cool video effects and stuff. So for my dance classes, I've used Video Star in the past um, to have my students create dance videos based on whatever music we're studying in class. So if you pay for the Video Star app, I think you get about 15 uh, songs that are given to you in full. But if you, um, if you do not pay for it, you can import your own music. Uh, and so that's something I did with my students is I would pick four or five songs that we were going to study and I would import them into video star. And after the kids were split into groups, I would say, go take, you know, iPad number seven, because it has the song that your group is working on. And they would be able to use that song and film and change and use all kinds of uh, video effects to create really cool dance videos. Uh, when you're done with the videos in Video Star, they save to your camera roll on your iDevice, which you can then upload to you know, your favorite uh, social media site, or you can upload it to um, pretty much any anywhere. You can put it in your Google Drive, anything like that. All right. That is by no means the end of dance applications. There are way more dance applications out there than I was able to share with you today. And this slide deck is forever growing. So if you have an app that you love for art, dance, drama, or music, uh, and I don't mention it today, by all means, pop it in the chat window and I will give it a look and add it to the slide deck. This is just meant to be something to wet your whistle and get you started. So I'm going to move on to drama, to some drama apps. And I think I've got about seven in this list. Uh, and some of them are really specific for a very particular um, person who would use them. And some of them are just really fun. And I've used them fairly ubiquitously uh, K to 12. So maybe not what you would consider a drama app, but we video. I use we video in my drama classes all the time. It is a completely web-based video editor. If you haven't used Wii Video, please go check it out. Um, students can edit, they can change, they can create, and they can collaborate all web-based. And just like some of the other things we're going to talk about today, Wii Video works anywhere. You can use it on a PC on a Mac, on a Chromebook, on an Android device, on an iOS device, on iPads, on phones, on tablets. Uh, I think I've even had a student use their Xbox One to connect to Wii Video. Uh, and they can use it and do pretty much um, any kind of collaboration they want. Uh, and it's, um, it's a really, really great program. Uh, there is paid versions of it, which allow you to use... Um, more of the video effects and allows you to have more transitions and more advanced effects. It also allows you to uh, save your videos in 4X quality as opposed to just 720. Um, but the free version is perfectly acceptable and I use the free version with my students. Um, I do have a paid version that I use myself for some of my um, webcasting and web events. 
Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a really, really great program. I can't say enough about it. And as far as creating little plays or recording uh, monologues or things like that, we video will really give you some, uh, some very, very powerful video editing effects uh, for very, very little to no money. All right, Padlet. Now, my Padlet page used to be an awful lot bigger but about four or five years ago, Padlet stopped being free and they started charging us to use Padlet, which made me very, very sad. However, um, Padlet now, if you go to Padlet, you can create three to four Padlets for free. What I like using about Padlet is it automatically creates a wall in front of you on your screen or on your smart board. And if you are adding little video clips or if you're adding, I use photo clips, then the students are um, popping up all of their images on a wall right in front of you. So here is what I did with a group of very young students, grade ones. Uh, we did this project actually last September, <clears throat> right at the start of the year. We got everybody in a room and I said, okay, everybody, I want you to show me the happiest face you can show me. And my kids one at a time would walk up to my smart board and they'd go, and I'd snap a picture and their picture would pop up on my Padlet one at a time until they formed this big giant wall of all my kids' um, brightly smiling faces. And I was able to say, okay, everyone, you know, this is, you know, homeroom 1A and they are all happy. And they thought, oh, this was great. And I did this with everybody and they thought it was a, as a, a great little game. And then the next week I got everybody back and I said, now can you give me the saddest face you can possibly make? So again, my students would pop up in front of the screen. They would give me a sad face. I'd snap their picture and all their pictures would come up one by one. And I would say, okay, now 1A is sad. And eventually they figured it out. We were going through about five or six emotions. So I had a page of this is us looking happy. This is us looking sad. This is us looking scared. This is us looking excited. And I was able to do two things with that lesson. So as a drama teacher, I was able to talk about emotion and how when you are acting a certain way, you need to express it with your face and express the emotions with your body. But I was also able to take some of my students that may be um, struggling with social cues or I was able to take some of my students uh, perhaps on the autism spectrum and I was able to do a lesson on um, facial expressions and what they mean. So we as a class were able to look and say, how do happy eyes look? How do sad noses look? And then the students were able to sort of pick apart people's facial expressions and be able to recognize, oh, that look is sad. If I see someone looking like this, it probably means they're upset or they're not in a good mood. And I was able to use that to build some social cues and some of my students that lacked that. Uh, but this all came from a drama lesson out of Padlet. It was a fantastic little lesson, but uh, I, I really enjoy using Padlet for taking those uh, pictures all up on the wall. The other good thing I used to do with Padlet um, is I would put up, I would tell the students we'd be reading a story, say we read, uh, you know, Tom Sawyer. And I would say, okay, everybody, um, I'm going to give you homework tonight to go find a, a place, get someone in your house, to take a picture of you. What does Tom Sawyer look like in, in, you know, in any scene of the book? And the kids would all go home and they'd improvise costumes or they would improvise, um, you know, hats or, or, or um, settings. And they would get someone to take their picture. And the next day we would see a class full of Tom Sawyer's. What did those students imagine that lead character looked like in that uh, play or that story? Um, so we were able to do that to do some character studies as well. What do you think the character looks like? Pretty cool um, effect. All right, so QWappy Improv. This is an improv game generator. So it's really, really fun, it's really easy. Um, it allows you to choose parameters. So you can say uh, how many students you want involved. I want to have three students in this game. Uh, I want there to be teams. I want there to be no teams. Um, you can say, I want them to speak. I don't want them to speak. Um, and then once you sort of set your parameters, uh, it comes back and says, I got a list of four games that fit this parameter. And you choose the game and then it gives you the instructions. You give it to the kids and you go. So if you have kids that are really into improv, um, but you yourself are not, totally sure um, 
to just have all those games in the back of your mind ready to go. The QAPI Improv Generator is a fantastic way um, to just make sure that you always have an improv game at your finger. It's a great thing at the start of class. Uh, if there are any supply teachers out there or any guest teachers, we call them sometimes in our school, who end up walking into a drama class and have no idea what to do, uh, have QAPI Improv on your phone and you can automatically pull out just a whole bunch of, uh, of improv games right at the tip of your hat if you needed it, right off the tip of your tongue. Okay, so Dram Arts. This is a really cool application, but it's very, very specific. So I am talking to high school drama teachers amongst us here in our, in our window. I am talking to um, the people that would direct the big production at your school, the plays, the musicals. This is an app that's designed for the director of uh, a, a lot of productions. So this is a all-in-one application. It works on iOS, it works on Android, and it works um, on, on machines, on laptops and desktops. This program sort of is your all-in-one director's Rubicon. So it has, you can create different companies. So if you were doing even something like The Crucible, a play like that, where you basically have two casts that don't really interact until the last scene, um, you can say like, this is company one and who's in it. This is company two. And you can have all their characters and all their real names. You can load up all kinds of scripts. So if you wanted to load scripts for your company to look at, so say you had um, like a like a grade 11 drama class and they were going to choose a script that they were going to do for their final project, you could load three or four scripts in, they could all choose. Um, it has things like setting up purchasing orders. So Dram Arts will allow you to actually um, manage your spending as the lead drama teacher or as the director. Um, it is definitely designed for theater companies or theater departments, but it also is a place where you can leave notes for other cast members. You can record videos for other cast members, and it's got a really cool rehearsal schedule um, section where you can actually have the actors put in their availability and their off times, and it'll allow you to schedule rehearsals when your actors are available. So if um, in a in a school setting, if you always knew that you know Matt had swim team practice on Wednesdays, uh, Matt would put in his schedule and say, "I'm never available Wednesday night." So you would be able to figure out as the director setting all of your rehearsal schedules for that week that. Matt can't possibly make it this week because uh, it's a Wednesday night rehearsal and he's always busy. Um, but not only that, you're not jumping between apps or jumping between uh, Google sheet pages. This is all one application dedicated specifically to putting on plays and musicals. So it's kind of a, kind of a, um, a niche market maybe, but it was a really um, rich app when I, when I dove into it. All right, Script Rehearser. So I found about six of these, uh, but Script Rehearser was the one that was completely free. So it allows you to import PDF scripts into this application, and then it will read particular parts of the script. So you can hit a button and mute it so that you can say your lines and unmute it and the app will say everybody else's lines that aren't yours. Uh, it's a great way for actors to rehearse. You can use your voice um, to record some of the lines if you want them, or you can use synthesized voices. So if you are a male and you wanna have a female voice um, actor say the female parts to you you can actually record your own voice through a vote through a female vocoder that allows it to sound like a female is speaking and you can record your voice doing the female lines and then play it back and then mute it so you can say the male lines while you as the female says the female lines it's pretty cool um there are a few different script rehearsers out there that are not free and some of them have like the coolest features in the world, but you have to pay for them. Um, I found one and I didn't pay for it because I wasn't, I, I didn't have the money, but it'll allow you um, different famous actors from Hollywood have donated their voices. <clears throat> so you could, you know, do a Shakespearean scene with Lawrence Fishburne 
and you push the button and Lawrence Fishburne is the voice that's reading the opposite parts to you. That's pretty cool. Um, they have famous stage actors and, and a few sort of Hollywood actors or people that have made the cross. Um, I forget the name of that application. You can look it up, but uh, it was rather expensive and it was just a gimmick, but it was kind of cool. I could imagine myself if I were a working actor, um, you know, what it would be like to, to rehearse a scene with one of your idols. Uh, and it seems every month or every couple of weeks, this particular app is hiring another actor um, and they're using um, all kinds of algorithms to get their voices to be recreated um, in pretty much any, um, uh, any dialogue. It's pretty cool. Anyway, that's script rehearser. Okay. So you might've noticed my background changed from gray to white. So the next two pages, these are not really designed for drama. They kind of fit anywhere. They fit with dance, they fit with drama, they fit with music. In some cases they fit with visual art, depending on how creative you are. But these are just two applications that I can't live without in my job. And I teach music, dance and drama. So the first one here, I called it video recorder, but that may be a little misleading. The actual name of this product is school video recorder for Google drive. It's a huge mouthful. I know um, it's actually an add on for Google drive. It's a really, really simple webcam recorder. Basically when you click on the little red record button that appears in your Google, um, on your Google page, it opens up your webcam and there's a start button and a stop button. And that's all it does. It just records your face off your webcam and your voice. Uh, and it's just a start stop. And when you stop it, it automatically saves it into your Google drive and it saves in the WebM format, which is totally small. So, um, I use this personally as a teacher, I use it whenever I have to be away and leave plans for a substitute teacher. I will actually leave my plans for my students in the shared Google drive. So I can actually just click a button, record my own voice, record my plans, record my face. As soon as I click stop, it's in the Google drive that I then share with my students. Uh, and it's right there. Where do you find the add on? Is it on the Chrome web store? Yes, I believe Justine. So what I've done, I apologize because this is going um, to be unhelpful, but if you go to gavinzo.com slash session nine and you find this page where it says school video recorder. If you click on this little circle right here, it's going to open up into the Chrome web store and take you to school video recorder for Google drive where you just have to click the add to Chrome button. So that's how you're going to get to it. Um, yeah, this, this program, I, I can't live without it. I use it for that. And then I make my students use it for a variety of things. Uh, if I have a student that just can't get around some of my other programs, I'll say, okay, try this one. Cause it's a single button start, stop, and they can make little video recordings and it saves directly to Google drive without any kind of must or fuss. Okay. Flipgrid is a huge program. I do an entire hour long session just on Flipgrid. As a music teacher, this program has changed my life. I cannot say enough good things about it. I am a Flipgrid ambassador and, and I, I don't think I could continue teaching without it. That's, that's how much I rely on this program. So I can't get into it in its full glory, but let me explain to you the short version of how I use this. So Flipgrid amplifies student voice. So if I'm a student and I have a very hard time writing or communicating my thoughts through writing, or if I'm new to the country and I have language barriers, um, or if I just for some reason am not engaging in class, Flipgrid is a way for you as a teacher to ask a question via video and the student responds via video and it is completely private. So you don't have to have a conversation where one student is talking to the whole class and everybody can watch the video and make fun of it. You can moderate it. You can turn it on and off. Um, but you have this ability for students to be able to communicate via video. And it is, it is life changing for me. Um, I just conducted a whole session last Friday, um, called 
<clears throat> music classroom flipping. So for any music educators out there, uh, the way I use Flipgrid is as a music teacher, I record myself playing a, a song on my trumpet and I say, this is going to be your test guys. And I play it and I show them my fingers and make sure they can see me doing it. And I say, you have one week to send me your test. And then my students take their instruments home. They use Flipgrid. They can record the test a million times until they get the exact version that they think is a hundred percent perfect. Um, they click a button, it sends to me, it sends to me privately. And in the privacy of my own home, I can watch their recording. I can assess their recording. I can give them individualized personal feedback for their recording. And then I can click send back to student and the student can watch their video and they can read my feedback or I can give video feedback and no other student in the class ever has to be part of that conversation. It has completely changed my um, my way of life. I can't say enough good things about it. Please check out Flipgrid. Um, if you want to check out my session, you can go to G-A-V-I-N-Z-O Gavinzo.com slash session four. That's my session called flip out with Flipgrid. Um, global GEG is also running their own Flipgrid sessions periodically, um, throughout the next month, I think. So check it out through global GEG as well. But Flipgrid is the most amazing uh, program in the world. I can't live without it. Okay. So now I'm going to get into my bread and butter. These are some music applications and I am going to warn you from the outset. I haven't used all of these. Um, and some people love them and some people, um, do not. So by all means put into a chat window, if you've heard of something before, if you've used it and loved it or used it and hated it, by all means, put it in the chat window. If I have used something, I'll tell you how I use it. All right. I'm going to start with Soundtrap. So, I am a Soundtrap certified expert. I have just managed to leverage my principal to let me buy Soundtrap for the music department for next year. Um, so I am very excited to use Soundtrap EDU. Uh, here's what you need to know about Soundtrap. One, it comes from Sweden. Two, it was just bought by Spotify like a year ago. So Spotify has given them a lot of money and they have done a whole bunch of upgrades. Three, Soundtrap EDU is one of the safest programs I have ever seen for students. Um, you set up with a button click, it's dead easy, which students are in your garden. So that's like your classroom. Um, and then the students can collaborate with each other, but they cannot get out of the garden no matter how hard they try. So if the student wants to collaborate with someone from outside their garden, which you designed, they cannot. Uh, if you want the students to collaborate with someone outside of the garden, you have to bring that person into the garden to collaborate with them. It is very, very safe. It is very, very private. Um, and not only that, it is an amazing program. So this is a web-based uh, DAW, Digital Audio Workstation. So that means students can use literally any internet connected device you can think of and they can not only create compositions and good compositions at that, um, but they can create podcasts. They can create audio notes to themselves. Um, when I was doing my innovator application, rather than um, talking to my video webcam, I um, downloaded or I, I, sorry, I simulcast all of my audio through Soundtrap and then I ran it through their digital audio processing to give my voice more clarity and to make my voice sound better. Um, if you look at the Soundtrap EDU uh, webpage online, they show students in history classes making up rap songs about the great depression so they can remember the key elements and recording it through soundtrap um, soundtrap has beat makers it has loopable music it has um you can play into stuff using midi soundtrap is just a very very fantastic uh program uh the free version is workable you can use the free version for lots of things um, for composition, which is what I use it for, for students creating their own music. The paid versions are better. Uh, the paid versions for education run about, I want to say about 10 to $15 per student per year. Um, so if you're going to get, you know, 50 to a hundred students, it is going to cost you a thousand dollars for your 
school, um, but it's well worth the money for all the things that they give to you. Um, if you're getting a personal subscription for yourself, uh, I think it's about a hundred US dollars uh, a year. But Soundtrap is just a really, really amazing DAW. I've used quite a few and it's by far my favorite. Okay, Flat.io. This is a music notation software. So rather than, you know, having your students sit at home with the old school fountain pen and making sure that they're drawing their note heads nice and round and their sticks nice and straight and their flags the right angle, um, Flat.io is just a musical creation notation online um, program and it's super easy to use. You can create multiple different voices. You can print scores or individual parts of music. It's MIDI compatible. So you can hook up a keyboard and play right into it and it'll write down what you're playing. Um, it'll allow you to do advanced editing markings. So things like slurs and ties and diminuendos and stuff that are there. You can even insert lyrics into it. And it does have a very simple playback feature where you can push uh, a play button and it'll play you back um, with like a cheesy MIDI piano sound, what it what it's going to sound like. Um, flat IO is super easy. Uh, if you are doing basic music theory, or if you are doing, <clears throat> excuse me, um, just some basic, um, you know, notes, lines and lines of the staff, things like that. Flat IO is a super easy program for kids to use too, uh, and allows them to create good looking music that uh, you can understand very, very well. Audio tool. So I have, um, it's another, it's another web-based, uh, digital audio workstation. Here's what I found about audio tool. I didn't use it, but I liked that it has this community of musicians. So, um, audio tool has a, when you, as soon as you get to it, it kind of opens up with, do you want to do something on your own or work with the community? And the community are all kinds of musicians from across the planet who play any number of instruments. Uh, and they will tell you, um, like sort of how to make your song better or they offer to help you out with it. It's a very, very cool community. Um, audio tool has a lot of synthesizer sounds and a lot of different drum machines. Uh, it doesn't have a ton of uh, woodwind sounds and band sounds and string sounds, but a lot of cool synthesizers and drum beats. Very good for EDM music. Uh, if you have students that are aspiring DJs, they might really enjoy Audio Tool. Um, and just like all my DAWs, there's a variety of publishing options. So you can send things out, um, you know, via MP3 or via WAV file or via FLAC, or you can send it right to Spotify or you can send it to various places. They've all got this sort of um, export feature. <clears throat> okay, drum bit. Drum bit, I love because it's so easy. I'm even going to show it to you, I think, right now. So drum bit is a very simple online. Hey, it's not working. It's a very simple online drum machine. If I can just find it here. There it is. Drumbit.app. Very, very simple online drum machine. Um, if you're not used to using drum machines, this might look a little strange to you. Um, but essentially, they're just sort of click on and off. And you click different parts of the drums on and off as you want them. And then you play, and it just plays through. I can get my grade one and twos using this program in like 15 minutes. It's super, super easy to use, but I can also get some of the high school students that I work with to do really creative things because it's got advanced features. It's got individual speeds and volume for every um, instrument. You can adjust the pitch for every instrument. If you don't like this drum kit, here's a list of other drum kits you can choose, including like Indian and Latin drum sets, which have very different world rhythm sounds. And you can create some really, really cool stuff with it. It can be recorded and, um, saved and then imported into another DAW. Um, but I have a lot of students use drum bit um, just to work on developing some percussive sounds. It's a really, really cool, really easy to use program. <clears throat> Soundation. I have not used it past writing the name down on this slide deck. It is another free digital audio workstation. It seems to function like most of the other ones I've looked at. Your music does not necessarily get saved to your device, but it gets shared with an online community. 
Uh, I can't tell if um, whoever just wrote in there that said, great, if you've used Soundation before, if you have, that's awesome. I'd like to know more about it. I've never actually used Soundation, um, but someone recommended that I give it a look and I got as far as playing with it for five minutes. Um, Note Flight. Note Flight is similar to Flat IO, which you saw a couple pages ago. So Note Flight is another online notation software. What I like about Note Flight, and there's a spelling mistake in here, I apologize, is not only can you create musical scores, but they have a marketplace with like well over 65,000 scores you can purchase. Uh, and anything that you purchase, you can rearrange with a click of a button. So if you bought a score online for band, um, but you have a beginning band and the, the information is, or the, the score is all written in C major and you want it to be translated to E flat, um, push a button and it translates instantly. All the parts and everything is perfectly done. Um, note flight again, um, is really easy to integrate with Google. So you can actually integrate note flight notation into a Google doc and into a Google slide and into a Google sheet. Um, it has a, a nice integration with Google, but it's also just another really easy to use online notation software. Okay, a lot of people have tried to talk me out of Soundtrap and into BandLab, um, including BandLab. BandLab sent me a big giant email giving me all of this free stuff if I would come and uh, go over and use BandLab. So here's my experience with BandLab. This is just my experience. Please don't take this um, as yourself. So it's another basically free online DAW. It has MIDI compatibility. It has lots of instruments, including band instruments and strings and uh, uh, international instruments. It's really cool, lots of effects. It's got a community. It allows you to listen to other people's music. Here is my concern with BandLab. My students all had drum parts written with Drumbit and they imported them into BandLab, and I was all excited about it. And then I went to go grab some samples. I grabbed like a bass line and some other stuff, and for the life of me, I couldn't change the key that the samples were in. So if you grabbed a bass line sample that was in the key of G, you could not edit it and put that into another key. Um, and so that made it really, really limiting in terms of grabbing the samples that you wanted to use because you had to grab a sample from whatever key you were also working in. But for my students who were quite young and just figuring out composing from the very beginning, um, it would have taken a lot of me teaching to get them into BandLab. Because if I say, okay, you guys are gonna have to compose something in G major, I have to make sure that they know all of the notes they can use, all of the notes they can't use, all of the modulations in order to borrow any of the sound bites from BandLab, which were really, really hard to change the key in. Whereas in Soundtrap, um, not only do the keys change super easily, but if your piece of music appears to be in the key of E flat and you're like, ooh, I really like this, you know, um, uh, cello loop, but it's in D minor. As soon as you drag that over and drop it onto your music, it recognizes that your music is in a different key and it automatically changes the sample to be part of the key that you told it to. Um, so it's really, really cool that way. The other thing I found with BandLab is I had a real hard time changing tempos of things. So if my students had their drum beat at a very specific tempo, I had a real hard time bringing in loops that would fit the tempo because the tempos were really hard to manipulate. So that's just my experience. And that's why I'm sticking with Soundtrap instead of BandLab. But I, I have had many people over the years when I try to describe Soundtrap go, oh, it's like BandLab, but harder, try BandLab. Um, so if you've tried BandLab and you love it, please reach out to me because I'd love to learn more about it uh, and get to use it. It's just not been successful for me. All right, so this is not necessarily a music app, but I just wanna make sure that everybody out there in internet land has heard about the YouTube audio library. So here is why I love this. All of the music in the YouTube audio library, you can search for all of the free online music that is rights-free digital music. And it's all downloadable. So if you have students making a podcast and they need theme music, go to the YouTube audio library. You can find music in any genre or style that is rights free and you are welcome to download it, take it and use it and you are not violating any copyrights. If you have students 
um, that are struggling with composition, you can go and grab something from the YouTube audio library and import it into your DAW and say, great, all you have to do now is put lyrics to this. Um, and you can have these like great downloadable rights free music that you are able um, to reuse at at leisure and one of the things i love most about the youtube audio library is it's searchable by theme and mood so you can you know search for dark music and it'll give you dark sounding music you can search for um vampire and it's not just going to find you songs that have the word vampire in the title it's going to give you songs that are vampire -y. I don't really know how to describe that musically, um, but it, you can search by theme or mood and it's got this really cool um, way of searching. Can the audio of YouTube video library be used anywhere else of YouTube? Yes. Uh, I think that's what you're asking me. Can you take the YouTube video live? Can the, can you take the, audio from the YouTube and use it somewhere else? Yes. So all of the music in the YouTube audio library is downloadable and free. So if you were making a video on we video, you can go to YouTube, download something from the audio library that's rights free, and then import it into we video as your soundtrack. Um, and it's just a great way um, to do stuff. Uh, I myself, uh, I had a, <clears throat> pardon me. I had two different, um, podcasts I was running last year and both of them just grabbed YouTube audio library music as my theme music. Uh, and they just worked really, really well. And I didn't have to spend, you know, a day playing into Soundtrap and getting my music perfect and writing my own theme music. I was able to just grab something rights free that fit. Perfect. All right. Now we've all heard of the expression fish out of water you are about to witness one. I do not teach visual art or design. I do not consider myself particularly gifted in visual art or design. I don't know an awful lot about it to my own admission, but I felt I couldn't leave those people out of this presentation. So um, in talking to some of my visual art colleagues, I have a, a short list of some visual art and design apps. I would love for this list to grow. So if you are an art teacher or if you are an art enthusiast and you have any good apps to throw my way, please type them into the chat. I'd love to check them out. So Pop Art Studio. This is really good for creating Andy Warhol like collages. Um, so what you do is you take an existing photo. So you take a selfie of yourself or one of your students. You'd go into pop art studio and it'll put up 16 versions of that photo, uh, all slightly different with filters changed and background images changed and styles changed. Um, and you can create collages that are kind of like that Andy Warhol style where every single, um, image looks slightly different. Uh, and you can say, I want 16 images. I want nine images. I want four images. Uh, and then you can go through the app and choose the ones that you want. It builds the collage. You can save it and print it. Uh, just a really cool little design tool um, to give students. Again, if you're teaching a lesson on Andy Warhol uh, and you only have a couple of images handy, uh, it's a great little quick studio where you can snap a photo of yourself or of one of your students in your class and say, this is Andy Warhol's kind of style and throw it up right there. What font? I talked about this as a design app. So what font is a uh, extension that you can get for Google and it allows you, it doesn't necessarily work here, but if I click on my what font and I scroll over it, oh, it's not telling me here because I'm using two screens. Uh, it tells you what font something that you are reading online is written in. So if you're looking at a website, and you're like, man, that is a really cool font for that title. I would love to be able to use that for my class or use that for this particular lesson. Um, you click your little what font application. It gives you crosshairs and you scroll down to your web page and you put your, um, your icon over top of it. And it says, this is Times New Roman, or this is Arial, or, you know, this is Roboto 4, or whatever it is. Um, it, it, 
automatically tells you what fonts are being used on web pages and things like that. Um, so I have found that for design really, really helpful. Um, if I knew I wanted a font to look exactly the way I did, um, or if, for example, you're doing a presentation like I am right now, and I wanted the correct font for the what font application, I was able to go to the what font website, click on my what font app, scroll down, and it told me what font they were using to get that logo. So I was able to, to make sure I was using the correct fonts for things. Good way to do it. Um, now, hopefully we all know what Google Drawings are. Um, I equate it to the old MS Paint uh, program. That's Google Drawings for me. But what I like about Google Drawings is they're collaborative. So if you needed to do some drawings with your students um, or some sketching or some design work, you can um, share a Google Drawing out with a group of students and they can work on it together. Um, it also, like all Google products, you can add comments without changing the drawing. And of course, because it's Google, you can access your drawings anywhere, anytime. Uh, and what I like best about Google Drawings that I really didn't like about Microsoft Paint is Google Drawings is completely um, uh, interchangeable and usable with any of your Google Suite products. So you can use it with docs or slides or um, <clears throat> sheets or forms. You can always import a Google drawing and they always work. They always fit. They're always editable and changeable. And it's just a really convenient drawing program. So if you haven't experimented with Google drawings, go try it out. It's similar to Microsoft Paint or Paintbrush, I think it was called back in the day. Uh, and it allows you to integrate really well with your G Suite. Okay, kind of like what font, I rely very heavily on my color pick eyedropper. It is another extension you just grab from the Google store. And um, if you haven't used this before, it works very similar to what I said, what font is there, it's hiding up there in the corner. So if I click on it and I say, I really want this blue that's here. Oh, hang on. I don't know if I can do this with, two things at once. I'm going to try. Uh, this isn't letting me do what I want right now, probably because I'm screen sharing, but it opens up those crosshairs and you can pick an exact perfect color from a web page and it'll give you um, the hex colors. It'll also give you the hashtag code. Um, so if you are really bent on having the exact appropriate color for something, uh, I use eyedrop color all the time. I use that color picker everywhere. So if I know that I'm going to need um, even something simple, like if you are not, uh, say, a Google certified trainer and you have not received the Google brand information, but you know that you want to have the exact Google blue, you know you need that Google blue for something because it's the color you got to have. All you have to do is open up a web browser to Google, go to your color pick eyedropper and just bring the crosshairs down over to the blue G of Google and it'll say this is that color and it'll allow you to then use that color in any G Suite um, program and you'll be able to type those colors in and get the exact color that you need. Um, I use it a lot if I'm trying to match um, like what I've done today. If I'm trying to match a particular brand's color for my slide deck, it's really easy to do. All right, so Google Arts and Culture. Uh, I will admit I haven't experimented as much with this program as I wanted to. Uh, if anyone is a friend of Frederick Ballou, he is apparently quite well versed in this. I would reach out to him on Twitter. Um, but the Google Arts and Culture um, app, it used to be called the Google Art Project Extension. Um, it is this really fantastic way of getting classical art on every web page you go to. So the way this was pitched to me is if it's installed properly, if you are on a, say you're on, um, oh, I don't know, like a Wikipedia page. And in the bottom corner there on the one side, an ad pops up for like a casino. Google arts and culture will automatically replace that casino ad with a famous piece of art. 
so that if you are teaching to your students, you're not getting casino ads and Viagra ads and pornography popping up on different websites um, because they're all getting replaced by famous works of art over top of whatever um, ad is there. And then if you scroll over to the famous pair of art, it allows you to have information about that art, who the artist is, where you can find the uh, chat, or sorry, sorry, where you can find the actual painting, um, who did it, what museum it's in, when it was painted. It's giving you information about the art as well. So it's a great way to bring uh, classical art to every single day. Um, now I can imagine students being distracted by it, but if I'm doing something in class, I have had students before go, that's an amazing picture. Where did that come from? Uh, and this way it's, it's classical art they're looking at. All right. Face app is just a fun little, um, photography app. My nine-year-old daughter is in love with it. Um, there are some paid things you can get on this, but there are also free versions that are fun to play with. So some of the things you can do with this app uh, is you can snap a picture of yourself and say, age me. And there's a button and it turns you from your own face to what it imagines you would look like as a, a member of our elderly society. It puts, uh, it puts me at about, I'd say 80 years old when I do it. Um, similarly, if you are perhaps not as young as some of us and you take your selfie with face app, you can say youngify me and it will turn you into a teenager. It'll adjust your, your, um, uh, photo to make you look substantially younger. There are ways to change your hair color, hair length, your facial hair, your gender. You can switch, show me as a female, show me as a male, um, and it'll switch all kinds of stuff. So it's just a really cool, um, photo editing app that deals with faces. And of course, as soon as you're done, you can save everything to your camera roll and export it wherever you want to. All right. I am running out of time. So I'm going to speed along a little bit here. Sketchpad um, is another Chrome web app. Um, it is great for creating new art or adding to existing art that's there. Um, what I really like about Sketchpad is it's got a backward and forward button. So if you have drawn something using Sketchpad and you've made a mistake, you can just go back, 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 and you can back it up, um, or you can go forward. Um, but also, if you're sh if you're using Sketchpad with a group of students to show them how to sketch something, you can slow down going forward and it will show them the drawing of the sketch in slow motion. Similarly, they can say, oh, I missed how to do that part. You can back it up and redo it. So it's kind of like a video of sketching, kind of a cool thing to use in an art class, I would imagine. <clears throat> sketch camera. This is just kind of a silly little app, but my daughter asked me to put it in because she also loves it. Any photo that you take with your phone, it will automatically turn it into a sketch instead. So it'll make it look like it was drawn with a pencil or with colored pencils or with pastels. It'll show up in color or black and white. It'll show you an abstract art version of your photo or a contemporary art style or a traditional live drawing. Uh, it's just a great way to turn your... Um, <clears throat> I'm sorry, to turn your photos into images. All right, Canva. Canva, hopefully most people know what Canva is. It is a great uh, collaborative uh, art and design tool. I use it to create logos, to create icons, to create branding. What I like about Canva is you can set up teams. So you can say, okay, the six of you are going to be designing a poster for this. And you can set those six people up as a team in Canva. And any one of the six people can do edits at any time, day or night, um, working with whatever project you're working with. Canva is great for setting very specific size guidelines for things. So if you were going to do, say, a, uh, a banner for Facebook, Facebook, which is a very specific size. You can set that up in Canva and say, here is your canvas. It's exactly this size. The six of you can go and design your uh, particular uh, logo or banner that you need for Facebook. For anyone who is a video game enthusiast, pixel art is a drawing program that allows you to do 8-bit pixel drawings. So as you are drawing things such as this heart up here in the corner, uh, it gives you that old 8-bit video game style of drawing, and it's just a, a fun game to play around with. 
AutoDraw is a web-based drawing app. Again, it's very similar to Microsoft Paint or Paintbrush. It allows you to um, just kind of draw and sketch, but it is um, web-based. So you don't need to download a program like the old Microsoft Paint. It's a web-based drawing program. All right. I have got about 45 seconds left, so I'm going to go very quickly. But first of all, I do believe that Global GEG gives you a certificate for being here today. But if you are not willing to trust them, or if you would just like a second certificate, you can go right here to gavinzo.com slash ATP. That's Artists Tech Palette, ATP. Uh, and it will give you a certificate for being here today that you can print off uh, and show your administrator all of the work you have been doing. Also, Global GEG does have a feedback form. However, I also have a feedback form and I assure you the only way I get better is through feedback. So if you are interested in filling out my feedback form, it is G-A-V-I-N-Z-O, gavinzo.com slash feedback. Uh, if you fill out a feedback form of mine, you will get uh, free access to a Google Drive full of literally thousands of freebies and giveaways. So please don't leave without filling out my feedback form. I would really, really, really appreciate it. Um, I am over my time by about a minute. So I am going to end it here. But thank you so much for attending uh, this Gav session today. If there is anything else I can do for anybody, please uh, reach out um, to me on Twitter. That is at Gav session. You can follow me on YouTube, youtube.com slash Gav session. I am also on LinkedIn. I have my own website, gavsession.com. And of course, you can always email me to gav at gavsession.com. I want to thank Global GEG for bringing me here today. And I want to thank all of you for being part of this session and witnessing the artist's tech palette. Thank you so much. Please make sure to send me uh, any additional apps you want me to add to the slide deck for later. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a fantastic evening. Thanks for stopping by.